What's going on, everybody? I am Dave Swift from ClientAmp.com, and I'm back with another Lifetime Deal Review because this is That LTD Life, the series where I review the best and the worst lifetime deals on the internet. Everybody's welcome. I'll give everybody a fair crack at my thoughts. Today, we are looking at Unifier.ai over on AppSumo. This is a content repurposing tool so that you can take, say, a YouTube link and then repurpose it into 30 plus formats. It doesn't have to be a YouTube link, by the way. It can be a lot of different formats is my gathering here. It says uh, you can use things like a media file, YouTube link, or copy pasting by text. And from that, you'll be able to give AI specific instructions to generate new content. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out, see how well it works. I am looking right here at license tier one being 49 bucks. Let's see what we're gonna get for that plans and details over on AppSumo. Of course, link in the description. If you like these reviews, that's the way to support them is to click my links down below. Very much appreciated to those who do so. So what I like right out of the gates about this tool or this deal, I should say, is that they include the features on every single tier. You just need to choose one that has the limits that works for you. So you don't have to go with the big one to unlock a certain feature, and then you're gonna end up paying for more limits than you'll ever use. So for me, I'm gonna try this out on tier one. And what I like about AppSumo is it's very easy to upgrade to tier two or tier three if you decide, hey, I like this one quite a bit. And of course you can dial it back. You can also refund any purchases that you make within the first 60 days. So really good uh, return policy. I happen to use it quite a bit, the return policy that is. So let's go ahead and grab tier one here. I'm gonna hit buy now and let's go ahead and check out. It's been a while that AppSumo has been doing this but they have little uh, upsells that pop up after you go to try to check out to upgrade you to tier three. And you think, oh, this is gonna be a better deal, but not, it's not, it's just like, you're paying the same price. They're just saying, you're, you're buying tier one, but you could buy tier three. It's not like an offer or anything enticing. It's kind of weird. I wonder what their conversion rates are like on that. If there's anybody inside AppSumo that'll share whether that's helpful, I'd love to know. All right, little onboarding process here. I'll just go through this and stop it if there's anything noteworthy. But the first question is what describes me best? I will choose YouTuber. Next question, it looks like there's only going to be two. I could be wrong, but this makes it look like there's gonna be two. Next question is how you're gonna use this tool. I'm kind of going into this blindly. I have not seen anything about how to use it. So uh, this is a little bit educational as well. It says uh, some of the options are auto-generate podcast assets. Even though these are not podcasts, I still create show notes. In fact, if you didn't know that, go over to clientamp.com right now and you'll find uh, for all of the most recent videos that I've published, I've got very detailed uh, descriptions that have been generated to you know, basically list out everything that's talked about in those videos. So those are available at clientamp.com very shortly, if not in concurrent with the release of each video. And then uh, one of the other options that I chose was repurposing existing content into social media posts. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but I'm interested in it. And finally, create educational resources from lectures and course recordings. So if you're looking to basically find a tool to help you summarize meetings, that's another option, but take long drawn out lectures, uh, YouTube videos like these, and then just make them more concise. It looks like Unify is, excuse me, Unifier is positioning itself as a tool to do this. What is going to be important to me though is Will it be better than just using straight up Claude or ChatGPT? Claude is my go-to these days. If I'm trying to, in fact, I do this quite frequently, I'll, instead of watching a YouTube video, I'll just download the, the video, transcribe it, and then put it into Claude and tell me the main bullet points. Or, or if it's a recipe, I'll download the video that contains the recipe, transcribe it, and then send it over to Claude and have it extract the exact recipe for me because a lot of YouTubers kind of just go on and on and get distracted and you don't actually get to the recipe very quickly. So. Uh, AI is great for this. Let's see how Unifier compares and whether it's going to be anything improved upon what you get with something like Claude. All right, so there's a little tutorial here. Understand how to use Unifier in under three minutes. Love when companies take the time to do some educational onboarding so that you're not just kind of left trying to figure this out on your own. Of course, I'm probably gonna go on too long about how to use the application anyway, so you're not on your own. All right, so quickly of the land here, we've got kind of a Notion style user interface, very minimalistic. Over on the left, you have a sidebar, and then kind of the main content area is on the right. It's very similar to many, many SaaS products, but just the style over here really reminds me of something like Notion. So basically, the way it works is we have the ability to create projects, and then we can generate content inside of those projects. So by default, they give us a project called My Project. I'm going to give a new project name here. I'll call it Folk UC, I just released a video on Folk UC. I'm gonna create some content based on that video. So here's my project. 
I'm clicked into that. So we can now generate content on this project. And then these are the types of content I want to have it generate. Let's say a summary of like a podcast summary. And let's say I wanted to do, oh, I don't know, maybe some alternative YouTube titles. I could choose that an email newsletter so I could email people and let them know about this video and kind of go into some detail on it. If I were doing an online course, I could do a lesson checklist, a worksheet, uh, case study exercises, things along those lines. But for now, I'm going to I'll maybe find some ways to promote this video. How about some tweets and a blog? All right, so now I have selected five different types of content to have it create based on my video. So um, I've not actually given it the URL for the video yet. I need to figure out how to do that. Let's click on generate content. And on this next screen, it's where I upload the source material. So I can either paste in text, upload a file, or drop a link. Now, if I have a YouTube video, it's actually going to transcribe that video and then generate the content based on that transcription. Now, I already have a transcript of the Folk UC video, but I wanna see how this tool does. So I will paste it in and choose write content. All right, so it says upload in progress, moving pretty quick here. If that is accurate, that's fairly impressive. Uh, even using other tools on the desktop, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than that. So Unifier was able to grab that video off of YouTube with some pretty impressive speed, but now I need to generate the transcript that it will use to repurpose the content into other formats. So before I click the button to do this, I can add some custom instructions if I'd like. I'm gonna leave that blank for this use case. Uh, then down below, I've got a checkbox to edit the transcript before the content is generated. So if there's something you feel like you want to add in before the content is actually created on your behalf, you can toggle this on. It is off by default. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on so that we can see what the editing screen looks like, although I probably won't be editing it very much. Uh, and then we can go ahead and proceed to generate. Now, I am generating five different pieces of content. I assume each one is going to take up one of my generations. So I should be down to 25 per, this is 30 per month, right? So 25 after this one generation. So keep that in mind. If you need more, you'd have to upgrade to tier two or tier three, which is gonna give you 80 or 150 generations. And we've not talked about things like workspaces or team members that are allowed, but we'll definitely take a peek at that before we close out the video. For now, let's just see how the generations do. I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. It's kind of interesting, it says generate for zero. I was trying to check if that was because the toggle switch was on here, um, but it seems like that should probably say five because that's how many different pieces of content I'm generating, but we'll see how this all plays out. I'll click the button. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, so the transcript is costing me zero generations. That's cool, they're doing the transcript for free. The summary is gonna cost me one. The blog is gonna cost me five. Ooh, this is getting expensive. So now I'm down to only 24 left. The tweets are gonna cost me one. The YouTube titles are gonna cost me one. And the newsletter is gonna cost me one. So instead of the five like I assumed, I'm actually gonna end up paying nine of my 30 credits for this one video. I would definitely need a bigger plan if I were gonna use this tool full time. However, remember this is a lifetime deal, 49 bucks. So you really can't argue too much with that since you're probably paying uh, 20 bucks a month for Claude or ChatGPT. Now it just comes down to the quality. Is this going to hold up? Is it gonna be as good as we're expecting from Claude or ChatGPT? I don't know what it's using under the hood. So that will be interesting to find out as well. All right, I clicked a button and the transcript was instantly available. I don't know if it was working in the background. It must have been because even if this is doing, you know, whisper through the cloud, that was still insanely fast because this video is not short. This is like an hour long video. This is crazy. Okay, it's not an hour long. It's 31 minutes, but that's still pretty long for a video. All right, I'm glad I did click into the editing portion of the transcript because it's actually not amazing. So for example, it got the title of the product very wrong. It called it Folk UC, uh, and then it does it several times throughout here. Now that's not terrible, but if we compare this to what Mac Whisper did on my own machine, you'll find that it's quite a bit different. So here is the transcript from Mac Whisper. Now, one thing that Mac Whisper did wrong is it said LTV life instead of LTD life. That could have been a pronunciation issue on my part, but it did get the product name, FocusC. FocusC is not a swear word. And you can see this is laid out very, very nicely. This is just a text file, by the way, that I have uploaded to a cloud sharing platform. But uh, otherwise, the transcript looks really good when it's coming from Mac Whisper, another application I'm just using on my local computer. So if we're just comparing the transcript, doing it locally on my computer versus using Unifier, I would say that, well, 
Neither one is taking any of the credits. Obviously, my local computer is not charging me credits, but it took a lot longer to do so locally on my computer. I think it probably took maybe 10 minutes or so for it to do the entire transcript locally versus almost seemingly instantaneous on Unifier. They're probably using a smaller, faster model or maybe even another transcription method altogether, but the quality not really as good. And I don't like that it's kind of all just clumped together in these big chunks versus what I was able to do with Mac Whisper, where everything's kind of parsed out by sentences, making it much easier to read and find typos. All right, so let's take a look at the editing features here because there is find and replace. So what I'm gonna do is select the incorrect naming here and I'm gonna do find and replace. I'll search for the term. It's weird that they say search term and then goggle and replace with Google. That, that's funny, but it just kind of gives you some cognitive dissonance here to say search term and then you're looking at Google. You're like, wait a minute, is this a search engine? It's kind of maybe a bad uh, example one to use here. All right, so now we're searching for folk UC and we're gonna replace it with folk UC. And I'll just choose, it looks like I found that twice. I'm just gonna replace all. All right, so I think it replaced them because the account went down to zero, but the dialog box didn't go away. And there is no X or anything to get out of this. So I'm just gonna click in the outside area there. I was able to get out. Okay, so my transcript has been edited. There were some other issues here um, where it says you would get F. That's not right. It should say you would get folk UC. So I need to actually manually edit this here. I can just type in the window and that works just fine. For the transcript, there's not really any rich text editing. I think that will come into play a little bit later on, but in terms of transcript, obviously it's just plain text. We can edit the speaker label. So if you have a multi-person podcast or just a YouTube video where you're having multiple people, you could go ahead and give them names here. Hopefully it identifies them uh, you know, accurately as to their voices, at least different people. Um, that is a tough thing to do. So um, I'm not gonna test that in this video, but if anyone out there does test it, definitely let me know how it works. All right, so I'll just call this speaker one, Dave. And then you can see all of the, the spots that I speak. If there were another speaker, obviously it would you know, kind of go back and forth. It could say Dave, guest, Dave, guest, so on and so forth. All right, so that's pretty much it for editing the transcript. We've got find and replace, speaker labels, undo, redo, and that is all. So the next step is to approve the transcript and generate content. Not a very clear button, I have to say, because that kind of just looks like it's uh, almost like a table of contents as I'm scrolling down here but it is a button, so I'm gonna click on it, and it says approving, and now it says writing. Please wait 17 seconds. I think I can click through here, and it looks like the tweets are already done, the blog is still being composed, the YouTube titles still being composed, the newsletter looks like it is literally being written in front of my eyes, and the summary is complete. All right, so we're gonna go through these in somewhat detail, just take a look at the quality of them. It says, please wait 17 seconds. It's definitely pinned more than 17 seconds. So it's kind of funny. They just chose that number. I wonder if it was to make it look like it was uh, very precise, like they were calculating how long it was going to actually take to display. Fun fact, it's really, really difficult for computers to estimate progress. How long it's gonna take to do an installation or a removal. It's basically just guessing. That's why those little progress bars that you always see seem wildly inaccurate. They might zoom along and then pause and then it takes 45 seconds, whereas the first like 90% took 10 seconds. Uh, computers are just not very good at understanding how long it's gonna take them to do something. So we're gonna see here in a moment, uh, hopefully a moment, what this blog post actually looks like. All right, the blog is still loading, but clicking through the others, everything else is already generated. So the blog was the one that took five credits, right? So hopefully this is a, a pretty long article based on a 30 minute video. Let's take a look at the tweets. Now remember, Folk UC is a video I recently published about a screen recording tool. And it's a screen recording tool that's kind of a competitor for another tool called Screen Studio. So um, we're gonna take a look here and see if this is actually, I'm look, glancing at the tweets as I explain what we're doing. And I'm starting to laugh because the tweets are terrible. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, just get into it. All right, so tweet number one says, here are three tweets offering ultra-specific guidance on how to use full QUC screen recording software. Now, I just find that really interesting. I, I don't think full QUC was in the transcript anywhere, but we'll have to go back to the transcript and actually look. All right, so I just did a command F here and I'm searching for full QUC and it says not found. Let's do their find and replace tool. No, it's not showing up there at all. So 
that's a bit of a mystery to me. How was it able to come up? Now, granted, this is a difficult product name. It's, you know, kind of weird. But how did it come up with this when it has the product name correct in the transcript? That is a mystery I don't have an answer for. Now, there is no search and replace on the tweets page. So the fact that it got this wrong, now I'm kind of stuck after having to go through and edit every single tweet manually. And let's see, can I even do that on the page here? I can at least, so that's good. So now I can do just my browser's find function, and then I can just find them all and replace them. All right, so some more things to think about here. First of all, I've got eight pages of tweets here to go through, but each page is a thread. It's not a bunch of single tweets. So here it says, here are three tweets offering ultra-specific guidance, and then it goes through a total of six different tweets that look like they're just kind of providing different forms of guidance. Now, I don't think I would just tweet any of these blindly. I would probably need to go through and, you know, edit them and make them in my voice, which maybe I could have done had I provided some custom instructions. But just having it say, first of all, it got the product name wrong when it was correct in the transcript. And then to have it tell me here are three tweets and then provide a total of six, that's a little bit concerning in terms of being trustworthy. And because this was a review video and I'm now tweeting some instructional content, it's a bit confusing. So like, for example, here, tweets three and four, they're mixing together different ways to use the tool and then just mentioning some of the things that I found missing in a product. Like, for example, there is no switch to turn on and off the cam on a clip by clip basis. So it says no cam screen switch. Now, when we're talking about sharing recordings, that's not very relevant. So in this case, a lot of these tweets are not very helpful, although it's probably a good place to get started. You can say, oh, maybe I can make a thread about the different ways to use folk you see, and then I can go in and write them myself. But what I'm probably going to find myself doing is then copying and pasting everything into another AI tool, since I can't actually generate anything with AI from this existing information. I can copy it right here, I can delete it, but I can't use AI to refine it further. Now notice here on the next page, it's still spelling the tool wrong. Folk UC, uh, we're, we have a comparison here, Screen Studio versus Folk UC, Folk UC and Loom. So it's getting Screen Studio and Loom's name correct, you know, capitalizing them, recognizing that they're products, but Folk UC is definitely just a little bit too obscure. It doesn't recognize that as a tool. Overall, quality of the tweets, not something I put my brand behind. For example, here's one that says, most people get this wrong. Customization doesn't mean complexity. Do most people get that wrong? I, I don't think people get that wrong. It says, Folk UC uh, allows customizing screen, webcam, and background appearance with ease. Effective customization should empower users, not overwhelm them. I mean, I guess that last statement is accurate, but this is very, like, it, it almost seems like we're talking about something very important but we're not. We're talking about a piece of software and then changing the background on your screen recording where you're probably showing someone in the other office, you know, how to delete something in their email or something. We don't need, we don't need that kind of grandstanding. It's a little, a little much. All right, let's take a look at the YouTube titles here. So we've already got this YouTube title uh, and then it's gone ahead and generated a bunch more spelling folk you see wrong in every single one. That is just perplexing to me. I wish there was some reason or some way I could understand that. But the good news here is we can take a look at their editor for the very first time. So it says, here are 20 captivating and SEO friendly YouTube titles based on the provided transcript. Unboxing Folk UC, $39 screen recording dupe. I mean, some of these are just plain bad. So cheesy ripple cursor effects, Folk UC's quirky animations. The struggle is real. Editing audio in Folk UC. Continuity camera, recording your iPhone with FocuC. Now that might be great if I owned FocuC and I was posting a video or a tutorial on how to actually use continuity camera inside of FocuC, but that is not at all even, I mean, it's just a tiny sliver of the content of the video. So not very great in terms of YouTube video names. All right, just for funsies, I went ahead and grabbed Claude here and I put in the transcript that I made with Mac Whisper and I told it to generate 20 captivating and SEO-friendly YouTube titles based on the provided transcript. So that was the same prompt that FocusC seemed to use, at least it was indicated when the titles came out. So let's go ahead and see what this does. 
All right, these are 20 excellent titles. They are all completely usable, all 20 of them, I believe. FocusC versus Screen Studio, the ultimate screen recording showdown. Uh, let's jump around a little bit. Maximizing your screen recording, tips and tricks for using FocusC. Enhance your YouTube tutorials with FocusC, features you need to know. So there's really no debate here. You can pause the screen, take a look at this. All of these titles are hands down better than what we're getting out of Usefire. Sorry, Unifier. That was not on purpose. So one last time, here are the Unifier titles. Take a good look at those, compare them to the Claude ones. You're gonna want Claude. All right, next I'm gonna jump past newsletter and just head over to the summary because that's gonna be a little bit shorter content. And then we'll compare the newsletter and the blog. Now, worth noting here, the newsletter was one credits to generate and the blog was five credits. So let's see if there's a real discernible quality in terms of what we're getting for our credits there. All right, overall, I think the summary is pretty good. It's only 162 words, so pretty short summary when we're talking about you know something that is 30 minutes long. However, you know it's got some bullet points here. I think it's a fairly decent little summary. You could put this at the beginning of something like a blog post or even maybe put it into a YouTube description to kind of mention everything that's included in the video. This does summarize pretty good everything that I talked about. Now onto our longer form content. We've got our newsletter and we've got our blog. So let's see, the newsletter, 552 words. The blog is going to be 5,370 words. So literally 10 times the length. That's why it's five credits versus one for the newsletter. So reading through the newsletter, I find it interesting how much it focuses on the negative statements that I made. So it says, Dave Swift notes the lack of presets for common aspect ratios and that it's a tedious process. It also gives a quote for me. You can't set your own custom font. You can't change the background color, Dave remarks. It makes it sound like I was just really down on this tool, which if you watch the video, I'm not. It's pretty good. I don't think it's as good as Screen Studio but I'm not necessarily just, you know, bashing it throughout the video. However, Dave laments the inability to switch between full screen camera and screen views, a feature available in Screen Studio's beta. So Screen Studio doesn't have it yet either. It's not at least commercially available. It probably will be soon, but uh, you know, I'm not lamenting or complaining. I'm just saying that, you know, it's an important feature that was not available in the video. So overall, newsletter pretty decently written. It's almost written as though it was maybe like, a community newspaper that watched my video and then is writing about the video. So it's it's very, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it's extremely professionally written or extremely um, in touch with the software, but it is reporting on what the video says. So that's interesting. There's some other things that stand out to me, like the fact that it says newsletter title here and introduction with a clear problem statement. It's fine that it's using those things for prompts, but it would be nice if it generated some for me, or if it's suggesting that the title should be this, then we'll just get rid of this and put it right here, which we can do with our editing tools. And then this can probably just go away altogether because it looks like the paragraph below it is the intro. So we do get a little summary at the end. It says key learnings. Uh, you could probably drop in the bullet points from here if you want. These are a little bit higher quality bullet points than the ones that are in the summary. You can see that uh, there's only four of them. But uh, you know, if you were tight on credits and you wanted to generate a summary and a newsletter, I'd probably just stick with the newsletter because you're gonna get essentially a summary at the end anyway. All right, so let's proceed on. You can tell I'm not blown away with the quality here. The many of these lifetime deal AI generation tools don't do the absolute highest quality. And when I'm doing AI generation, I generally want the absolute highest quality that is available through modern technology, which is why I'm going through something like Claude Pro right now personally. So let's go ahead and check out what the blog did because man, a 5,000 word article, that is pretty long. Let's scroll through this. It is super long here and there's headings and lots and lots of chunks of text. I don't see many bulleted lists or maybe any highlights or anything like that, but it does really go through every component of the video here. Now, one thing that's interesting is the article never mentions AppSumo, which is where you purchase FocusC, and I say that inside of my video. So if someone were reading this, they would think that the plans actually come from FocusC themselves. Oh, really, I've just noticed this, but it's worth mentioning, it spelled the product name right inside of the blog. It didn't get it right anywhere else. 
the newsletter doesn't get it right, the YouTube titles didn't get it right, but the blog, the one that costs five credits, does get it right. So this must be using a higher quality uh, AI tool in order to generate. My point still stands, it doesn't mention AppSumo at all. So it's, if someone were reading this, they would think, well, I'll just go to FocusD's website. Wait a minute, why don't I see it for $39? They also don't mention lifetime deal. So that's pretty important as well, since the video is specifically a lifetime deal review. Overall, if we break this down, I gave it a YouTube link. And then a few moments later, I ended up with a 5,000 word article. This definitely seems like the value in the tool. So for 49 bucks, you could essentially write six blog posts per month for $49. Or if you were to upgrade to one of the higher plans, it's going to go down per blog post, you know, pretty substantially here because, well, maybe not because I thought this would be doubling. Let's do the math here quick. A few moments later. So I have not been super positive about the content that's been generated so far. However, I think the blog post definitely in another league than the other content choices that I made in terms of tweets, YouTube titles, newsletter, and summary. The blog posts, quite good. 5,000 words, you know, just a few years ago, that would have been amazing to click a link and then essentially get a 5,000 word blog post based on a YouTube article. That's like the stuff of dreams. I know we're all used to it now. I still find it a little bit amazing. This one is pretty good. I would say that this article, definitely you'd want to caress it a little bit, but it's thorough. It's it's good. It's going to get at least enough eyeballs to your website that the people would watch the video or whatever you want it to have happen. So let's take a look at how we can find some value in the Unifier LTD. What if we just focused on creating these long form blog posts? Then the deal gets a little bit more interesting. In fact, I think I uncovered something that's, uh, I don't know, it's interesting to me. So if we look at this in terms of how many articles can I generate? Well, with tier one, 30 generations per month, each blog post, five generations. So we get six articles per month. However, when you go from tier two to tier three, you don't get double the credits, but you do pay more than double the price. Very, very interesting choice in terms of the pricing structure. Maybe they'll adjust this. They often do with these types of lifetime deals. But you would think you would at least get double since you are paying more than double, so 160 generations. But as it is right now, your price per article is going to be lowest with tier two. Tier three is actually higher price than tier two. Now, this is all a little bit difficult to discuss because remember, we're talking about a lifetime deal, right? You pay this once and then you can generate these articles every single month. So it's not as though it's a straight up transaction where it's like each credit is worth this many dollars. No, you're getting these credits renewed month after month. So if you're not reusing all of the credits every single month, well, this is a moot point. But I do think for those people that want to optimize their spending, maybe getting even multiple tier two accounts could be more beneficial to you than having separate tier three account. Uh, and, you know, because if you look at everything else, well, if you got multiple tier two, you'd have 10 members per workspace, you'd have eight workspaces, and you'd also now have a five hour upload link. So everything else is included. You just get an extra 10 generations per month, two logins, kind of annoying, but you know, not the end of the world. And then you'd actually save a little bit of money as well. So tier two looking like if you're using this tool just to create these 5,000 word articles, that might be the way to roll. All right, so I'm gonna show you the last few features of Unifier, and then we're gonna to start to wrap up the video. So we've already seen how we can organize our content into projects. Now, if I open up Focus C here, I can see that my content that I just uploaded is now nested inside of that project. Now, I also have Teams. The team section is going to allow me to invite team members. So I could click up here, add in my team members, and invite them. With my AppSumo plan, I get a total of five team members per workspace and I get two workspaces. So right now I'm on Dave's team, but I could click the little drop down and create a new workspace. I'll call it Client Amp. Here I can invite my members. And now once I'm in the Client Amp workspace, you can see that it is distinctly different from the original Dave's team workspace. Now, strange glitch happened when I created this workspace, it actually made it multiple times. I'm only supposed to be able to have two workspaces, so why don't we see if we can add even more? 
And just to confirm, I did create a project in one of the workspaces called test one and the other one called test two. So even though they're both named ClientAmp, they are distinct workspaces. This little top bar just came up asking me to review the product on AppSumo to get 30 bonus credits. Uh, so that's interesting. I could literally double my account uh, by leaving a review. Uh, but I don't know how I feel about entice reviews, uh, at least, you know, marking down that, hey, I'm getting paid to do this. Uh, it's one thing, but, uh, you know, that's a topic for another video. I also can't get rid of this top bar, so that's another level of annoying. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just test to make sure all of these workspaces are able to create content. I pasted in my transcript here, and what's interesting is that the upload is going probably slower with my pasted in transcript than when I just linked over to YouTube. My whole point of this was to test out and make sure that all of the different workspaces I was able to create, which was far more than two, that they were gonna pull in from the same allotment of credits. However, at this point, uh, I'm just very confused why text is taking so long to upload. All right, so my transcript has been successfully uploaded. I'm just gonna generate a video description for the transcript that I uploaded. We'll generate for one token. And you can see it writing here in front of us in real time. Uh, for a YouTube description, this is pretty long. I'm not sure if there's an actual limit on the number of words in a YouTube description, but 701 is far longer than any uh, YouTube description that I've ever used. Anyway, the point here was not to critique the content, probably just further emphasizing the fact that I would not recommend this tool for much other than the blog post, which seemed excellent. Um, this seems w probably not something you have. Let's check. All right, so it has a maximum of 5,000 characters. Now that is not words. Uh, let's check it out here. We are at 4,200 characters. So this does fly, probably just not optimal, I would think. I'm trying another content generation here. Uh, again, it's taking a long time to upload that transcript, so that wasn't just a one-off thing, confirming that. I'm gonna do a YouTube or a blog outline based on the same uh, transcript that I uploaded previously. And this one is definitely in a third, maybe is this the fourth? This is the third workspace, I believe. And I'm only supposed to get access to two and I've created four so far. So we'll find out, uh, you know, it's kind of what's going on with their limits. My point here is if you're going to buy a bigger tier just to get, let's say four workspaces, well, maybe you don't need to, at least not right now. It seems like they don't have all of their ducks in a row in terms of code optimization because I'm able to create four workspaces. All right, it's letting me generate this blog outline for free, it seems, which is not helpful because I actually wanted it to use up uh, one of my credits. All right, so here's my outline. Uh, I've definitely created content in all of these uh, workspaces you see right here. And if I look at my plans and billing, actually what I want to do is go to my generated content, how do I see my usage? There we go, remaining generations for this workspace per month is 20 generations. Just a feature idea, it might be nice if they let you assign generations to a specific workspace. So let's say I had four workspaces and 80 total credits, maybe you wanna give each one of them 20 total generations so that let's say if I had a client, they didn't use up all of my credits, I could say, okay, you, you can make 20 generations per month, here's the tool we provide for you. Um, that could be helpful, but as it is right now, there's no way to do that. It's just all shared. So someone could come in and utilize everything. There's also some other small things missing. Like there's no way to add in like a custom avatar for your workspace. That'd be really nice to add in maybe a logo for your company. You also can't delete these as far as I can tell. If I click the little drop down here, there's a button to create workspaces, but there's not one to delete them. There's a danger zone project deletion section inside of my account which is a strange place for it. You think that would be inside of the actual projects, but they're not. So yeah, I think they're not quite done writing this app. That, that seems pretty sure. Oh, there's a little gear icon up here. What happens if we click this? Project settings. Okay, so here I can delete this project. Interesting that it shows up inside of the actual um, account area as well. So this must be to delete the workspace. This, they must have not updated this yet. But anyway, you can't use the button. It's It's you know, not a working button. There's a little uh, no smoking sign that comes up. So yeah, can't delete uh, workspaces at this point and they've labeled it wrong as deletion. So that is Unifier. I'm perplexed by this one. It's got that one pretty good feature of generating articles. There's a lot of tools to do that these days, but this is the one that's available right now. Coming back to my reoccurring statement that all software is a commodity at this point. And you just need to buy what you need at the time you need it and then not worry so much about keeping up with Joneses or you know, FOMO and all that good stuff. 
So Unifier, probably pretty good for generating articles. I'm not sure I would use it for much else. It's really worth it to invest in a larger language model, a larger language model like Claude or ChatGPT, uh, you know, paying for their monthly premium if you can afford it because you're just gonna get a lot better output and you want the better output. That's the bottom line. So I'm gonna give this one a rating of 6.2. I think it is good for that one use case. That, that honestly, that might be high. They might've just got, it, it probably should be in the fives, just judging by the fact that like their own limits aren't even working yet. Probably should put it in the fives, uh, but I'm gonna stick to it, 6.2. That is my review of Unifier. My name is Dave Swift. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you for watching. If you need help with your website, check out clientamp.com and I'll see you in the next review.